Join us today for an action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. We talk about hitters in rounds 12 through 15. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you Locked On Sports Network, your team every day. As always, we are your number one source of fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Matthew Ane. Unfortunately, I'm not joined by my co-host, Dominic Martino, but I'm here to give you a good one. You can find us on all social media platforms, podcasting apps, and please like subscribe and leave a five-star rating on apple spotify or wherever you may listen and if you're watching on youtube click the bell below it'll give you alert to every time we drop a new episode and subscribe you to the channel so please do that and you won't miss a beat and lastly join us on subtext for more in-depth personalized experience of of locked on fantasy baseball and guys, we got a good one for you. And before we do, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. Visit FanDuel. FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Okay, guys. So past all that premise, I do want to talk about it. I know we just did our you know mock draft episode. If you didn't see that, please go ahead and check that out. It was a really good one, honestly. Uh, you know, we kind of just showed what, how we're kind of approaching it so far this early and trying to tinker as well. So you'll see our draft plan kind of evolve through that. But the whole purpose of this exercise of this episode essentially is to say, hey, we are going to be breaking down and seeing who's going to be available round by round based off of ADP. So, you know, you can get a good idea as you're going through each round who you want to target. And, you know, based off your team construction, you'll have a good idea of who the guys that are really, you know, guys you kind of must draft in these rounds based off of that positional need or just based off of your team construction. Now we're in 12 through 15. So you're probably looking at like, you know, UT at this point, or if you missed out on a certain position, like, I don't know, second base or first, this 12th round is actually really perfect for it. And I'm going to open up with probably my fav- one of my favorite first basemen we're talking about today. And that's Christian Incarnacio Strand, baby. My guy is just going to be electric going into this year. I'm super excited to see what this kid and the Reds are going to do. I mean, he did have a small little stint in the bigs. What? 63 games. He batted about, batted about 222 at bats, 29 runs. Seven doubles, 13 bombs, 37 ribs, two stolen bases, and had a nice batting average of 270. I mean, normally when I see a player come up and, you know, get the call mid-year, you're not sure what you're going to get. But when a guy does this, you know, you pretty much have high expectation for going into next year. And with with CES, I mean, I I don't foresee um, (laughs) – Anybody kind of missing out. I don't think this price is actually going to be accurate either. at pick 133 right now based off of ADP. You know, I think he's going to probably, as draft season progresses and we get more into like February and whatnot, it's probably going to be closer to like, you know, anywhere from like 110 to 98, in my opinion. And I'll still feel great walking away with this dude. But if you're doing your drafts now, like you're doing early NFBC drafts, like this dude's coming away as a value right now. I, I think, honestly, you scoop them up, you know, like a draft and holds or whatever. But, you know, if you guys are doing super crazy stuff, you know, this this time and this early right now, you're actually doing your league drafts, which I don't recommend. Christian Uncanasio Strand is just a stellar pick. Quite honestly, there's 40 home run upside. There's batting average. There's runs and ribbies, especially with that Reds team. I don't foresee him foresee a path where he is not successful. The only thing is, you know, what does his rookie year look like with a full year in the bigs? Does that batting average dip to more like 250? You know, does does he struggle for a bit and, you know, have a slow start like Julio did um, or Bobby Witt, you know, now that the league has kind of a, like, kind of seen a little bit of them, uh, of him. So, like, 
let's see what happens. I mean, I'm I'm still drafting him with out, utmost confidence, and I feel really good if I walk away with him as my first, as my starting first baseman. You can get him as a UT. You're really you're scoring right there. Well, let's move on to the pick right after him, and another like you know, short like kind of like low talent pool in that of uh, the second base in that second base position, and that's Zach Geloff. Zach Geloff is another another guy that's not a prototypical you know second baseman usually when you get you know a second baseman they're pretty much like really no power upside and they're all pretty much like stolen base and batting average essentially really shifty guys but geloff is kind of interesting right like he has a little bit of stolen base upside like in last year in the minors he had 20 stolen bases but i don't know how legitimate that's going to be going into next year that was a career high for him but hey who knows you know we, we shall see and plus he had 14 in the majors last year once he did get the call so it's really just a grand total of 34 last year in total i just i don't know how legitimate it is but the power is legitimate 14 bombs through 69 games and 270 at bats 40 runs 20 doubles a triple uh 32 ribs and batted 267 i like gel off a lot I don't know what his batting average is. If you look at his, you know, minor league career, he's had a season of 304. He's had a season of 270. He's had a season of 333. And you know what? I don't know really what to expect, especially with the with the big leagues of 267. I think it's kind of more like the 270, 285, which is still fantastic. I think that we could see 30 home runs, if not more. Um, he got damn near close between AAA and the bigs last year with at what 26. Uh, you know, I just and that's only what little over 500 at bats that's like a full season so four more home runs i don't think is out of the well out of the realm of possibilities uh, you know for points leagues i don't know if i'm really drafting him all that much it looks like he is a strikeout machine but i mean it still gives me a vote of confidence that he's still gonna be good just maybe points leagues maybe another tick down but i mean geloff is somebody that i'm drafting in my top in not my top 10 but he's a top 10 second baseman for me so Ultimately, I feel that you need to, you know, take advantage of the cheapness right now as well, even though I kind of think this is kind of where we're going to see him because people kind of want to see more. He wasn't, you know, somebody that was very desirable coming into the season, even though he did wonders for teams that owned him last year. You know, the also the fact that he's on the A's is also, you know, a down. So he, I think this is kind of the draft price where we're going to see him. And I think right now this is very valuable. If you missed out on a higher tier second baseman, I'm definitely shooting my shot with Geloff. So, you know, keep an eye out for him. And, you know, God forbid you do miss out on the higher tiers. Geloff is your guy, especially around this lane. Now, before we move on and we talk about a guy that, you know, pretty much just got just signed and is ready to rock and I think is going to have a great season, I have a sponsor for you. The new year for many people means resolutions uh, resolutions to save money. So stop shopping without getting anything in return. Start getting cash back with every purchase you make with Ibotta. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies and toys. So make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $145 a year. That could cover the cost for an entire shopping trip. By the, by the flight you've been eyeing, the game you've been dying to go to, the fancy dinner you've been craving, or other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, just add your offer in the app, upload your receipt, and you get real cash that you can get <laughs> right to your bank account, PayPal, or gift card. Join with over 50 million savers, earn cash back every time you shop with 2,700 brands and retailers, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, and Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 for just trying Ibotta by using the code Locked On MLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning today, Ca earning cash back today, and use the code Locked On. That's Ibotta, I B O T T A, in the Google app, Google Play, or App Store, and use the code Locked On. We also have one other sponsor for you. I know we come to sports to escape some crazy realities of life, but can we talk for a minute and prepare uh, about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies 
are running out of antibiotics. Amoxicillin right now is in the middle of the worst flu, flu season in over decades. This is scary. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than, you know, my wife or my kid or, you know, not having not having this medicine and being sick and dealing with these supply supply chain issues and, and not having access to life saving medication that they need. Thankfully, we'll be okay because of Jace Medical. Jace, the Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics that can treat long <laughs> that can treat a long list of bacteria illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, um, sinus and skin infections, among others. This stuff could help uh, help happen at, to any of us. Sorry, I'm stumbling here. Visit jacemedical.com and complete the uh, physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board certified physician and your medication will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the cost, which is huge. It's never been more important to prepare than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use a code locked on to get $20 off your order. All right. One last thing, guys, and I swear to God, we're going to get back to some fantasy baseball. Introducing Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast Diamond Club on Subdex, your ultimate ultimate fantasy baseball companion. Dive into offseason with Dom and I as we provide you with tiered rankings with over 100 outfielders and starting pitchers ranked. Prospect insight, sleepers, breakout, busts, and personalized draft grades, if you may ask. Have burning questions? We've got the answer. As the season unfolds, rely on our dynamic content. Get real-time alerts right to your phone, including waiver wire rankings, instant call-up alerts, injury reactions, and a whole lot more. Stay ahead of your fantasy leagues by joining the Diamond Club on Subtext, where the path to victory begins. Subscribe now and alleviate the fantasy baseball experience. Uh, elevate your fantasy baseball experience. Whew. Man, I wish I had Dom here just to take over this next one. But it is what it is. We're getting back in it. And we got another good guy. And the guy I was teasing right before is Teoscar Hernandez. He's going off the board at pick 147. Now, Teoscar had a little bit of a slow start. Didn't really live up to his draft price last year for the most part. If you had him over a season total or you draft him. But I found him on a lot of waivers last year. And I was able to scoop him up. And honestly, once he started getting going, he was going. And he finished off the season pretty nicely in all honesty. Um, you know. Let me just get this loaded here. So through that, he actually also stayed healthy. There was some downsides in certain set, certain stats, but at the same time, I'm still really happy with the output, especially being more of a waiver wire pick. Uh, so last year, 625 at-bats, 70 runs, 29 doubles, two triples, 26 home runs, 93 ribs, seven stolen bases. Struck out like an animal in comparison to walking because he only had 38 walks to 211 strikeouts, but batted 258 still, which is really nice. Um if you haven't heard, here's your update. He was he just signed with the Dodgers. Uh, this is a monstrous signing for him right now uh, in terms of just being in that lineup and what the upside could be for him. I'm not sure where he's going to hit in that lineup yet. Like, that's still TBD. But quite honestly, like, Teoscar is going to benefit from that very deep lineup that they keep adding to. So I foresee him being able to, you know, really take advantage of it. Now, the other thing is we're going to have to worry about you know, him going to a new team in my rule, right? But at the same time, like, he's not really costing as much at pick 147. He's probably your third or fourth outfielder, your UT. It's somebody that can potentially, you know, give you four to five categories can contribution where you're not going to really, you know, get that this late in the draft, in my opinion. Now, I still feel his draft price will probably raise as we get closer to draft season. But even if we repeat what he did in 2022, where he hit like 267, he had, you know, six stolen bases, he had, you know, 25 bombs, which isn't too far off, and, you know, has the same amount of ribbies as last year, I feel like Tasker could be a serious contributor this late in the game. So quite honestly, let's just keep him in the back of our mind. Let's, you know, as we're getting later in the draft, and maybe you didn't get the, the outfielder, you got sniped on that. You know, Teoscar's still going to be living a little bit lower, and you know what? You can kind of feel okay if I need to pick up a different position because I know Teoscar's going to be in that next round, and I think he's going to follow me, then I'll probably scoop him up, and boom, that completes my my centerfold. And even if he's my UT, I'm feeling real great about it. Like, Teoscar can be, seriously contribute to fantasy lineups this year. So, you know, keep an eye out. This dude can can be good for us. Now, as much as I like Teoscar, 
This next guy, I, I like just a little bit more, and that's uh, T.J. Friedel uh, going to pick 149. Uh, I. You know what? I just look at him and I'm just super excited about what his upside could be. My guy is again on the Reds. You know, that team is just going to do big things, in my opinion. And I like what the upside brings. Last year, he had a pretty good season 488 at bats, 73 runs, 22 doubles, eight triples, 18 bombs, 66 ribs, 27 stolen bases, 47 walks, and 90 strikeouts, literally 50% walk to strikeout ratio. And Batted 279. Fantastic numbers. For starters, last year, really good for points. The walk to strike strikeouts was enough to, you know, counteract itself. The triples were real nice, and the doubles were real nice as well. Plus, he put up a little power number, which I was really enjoying. I like Friedel for this year. I don't know truly what where, where we're going to look at. I think he's going to be like a 20, 22 home run guy. With, you know, 30 stolen bases. I think that's legitimate. I think the batting average is pretty real. And I think with that team, you know, kind of progressing and going to the moon pretty much with Ellie and CS and all the others that are on this team, you know, the runs and ribbies are going to fly up. And I think that Friel is going to be serious, seriously undervalued this year. So at pick 149, another outfielder I like this late, it's going to be hard to choose. It's really just based off of, at this point, team construction, right? Like, okay, do I need stolen bases or do I need more of a consistent cog in my, in my lineup where I, you know, I could supplement that with, you know, run, the higher run and ribby output and home run output from Teoscar or do I want the upside of Friedel, this young player on a stellar stellar lineup as well? Excuse me that, you know, could possibly just go moonshot and keep up with the Dodgers. But then I also get stolen bases. So it's just really a matter of what you want to do here and who you want to, you know, essentially pick your horse and bet your and and bet your team on it, essentially. But at this point, it's a great pick overall. Let's move on. Let's talk about a guy that was kind of like a waiver wire darling late in the season and somebody I'm intrigued on pitching, uh, picking this year. That's Chaz McCormick. Okay, Chaz, <laughs> I like his name first off. Chaz just sounds like he was in a frat. Um, <laughs> come on, Chaz. You, you know what I'm saying? But like, you know, Chaz McCormick was really, really good last year, especially in the playoff months, in all honesty. You know, you look at his overall stats on the season, and it's nothing like that will seriously blow you off the, like, you know, blow you away. He had 403 at bats. He had 59 runs. He had 17 doubles, two triples, 22 bombs, 70 ribs, 19 stolen bases, and batted 273. He's 28 years old, and you know what? I'm not one to buy a late, a late year, like a, a late age breakout, an age 28 breakout, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. But I just like what he was doing last year. Like he kind of was really impressive in July and August, had serious, serious months there. In July, he had six home runs, and in August, he batted 351 in July, 271 in August, still was doing pretty good in September, you know batting average was desirable but ultimately wasn't a bad season a bad month either I, i'm interested to see what he's gonna do so like being nice pick 162 like okay if he's my first like bat bench player or you know whatnot or i play in a five outfielder at league like yo Chaz might be the guy like i'm not mad at that pick so like keep an eye on Chaz and see what spring training brings and hey you know Maybe we get a little more out of him going in the next year. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. I like him. Now, the next bunch of names I got after this break is really fun. We got two catchers. We got an outfielder and my other favorite first baseman who's going for an incredible value. Back-to-back uh, -back picks. And then a young rook that just signed a whole bunch of bag of money that I think is going to be a stellar pick as well this year. I got one, one last sponsor for you. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is super easy to use, and there's so many different ways, like so many different ways to bet, like live same game parlay. You can go and find bets on the Explore tab 
to make a parlay or find a parlay on Parlay Hub, the best way to find the popular parlays and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a touchdown. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Okay. We are streamlined here. This is it. We're done. We're done with all the sponsors. We are we're going to be just strictly fantasy baseball to the end here. Okay. I know it's a little bit crazy this week. I apologize. A couple of you guys commented. I understand. I get it, but got to do it. And we're here. Now I'm going to, we're going to be talking a little bit of draft strategy. We're going to be talking about guys I like, and this is the time where I start considering a catcher. And there's two of them. Logan O'Hoppy going to pick 163. Okay. I like him a lot. If anybody's listening to this podcast, if you were not, if you were been around a little bit with me, you know how much I like Logan O'Hoppy and how disappointed I was that he got hurt last year. Logan O'Hoppy, I think, is going to have a fantastic season. Um, quite honestly, what he did, even when he returned, really wasn't disappointing either. So, like, he had what 182 at bats, 51 games, and coming off that brutal injury. Still had 23 runs. He still had 14 bombs in that short period of time. He still had 29 ribs. The batting average in strikeouts was pretty ridiculous. Like, I mean, he was batting 236 and only 14 walks to 48 uh, strikeouts, which is pretty ugly. But that is in Logan Ohapi. My dude has some has some you know plate discipline. And you know, speaking of which, in 2022 in the minors, he had 70 walks to 74 strikeouts and batted 283. Along with that, he had 26 bombs. Like, the power is 100% legitimate. And I see him playing every day. Like, I don't foresee him not playing every day. You know, Trout's still there. They still got to do something. They just lost Otani. The the power needs to be influxed and, you know, replaced with the loss of Otani. So Logan Ohapi, I think, is going to step into an everyday role and, you know, really be valuable. They'd be stupid not to let him play every day, either whether it's catching or playing DH. Um, I think Trout should, all, Trout should also be playing more DH than outfield, but I have a feeling that, you know, they'll be rotating that and Ohapi is, should get an everyday play, which is going to make him very valuable. Now I pick 163. Now it's a little rich for him. I still think he's going to fall. I don't know. You know, as we get into draft season, I feel like this number is actually going to drop and you're going to have him as a better price in all honesty. So, you know, we'll wait and see on him. But 163 still ain't bad, you know, if you're trying to capitalize and you're trying to get him, trying to, you know, get a catcher and just like, okay, I drafted my whole lineup, catcher's the last thing before I draft in my, my bench players. Okay, cool, let me scoop up Logan O'Hoppy. That's never how I approach it, but I, I wouldn't blame you to do that in that moment. But anyway, Logan O'Hoppy, I think, is going to be a fantastic pick overall. Again, I think he's going to fall. So just keep an eye out. If he falls, he'll be on our, you know, ADP risers and fallers list uh, episodes as we get into the season and, you know, pitchers and, and catchers report. So, yeah, hmm. funny if we're talking about catchers. Huh? But anyway, all right, we're going to talk about another catcher now. And this is actually my favorite, even though I love it, Logan O'Hoppy. And I've said uh, every guy's my favorite. But I really I'm, I'm infatuated with Jonah Heim. Uh, Heim is going to be fantastic. I love the Rangers. I think that he's getting every day play, every opportunity. And if he didn't get hurt last year, I feel like he is, he would have just been even better. He was stellar, fantastic waiver wire pickup. And nobody really saw this coming because we didn't know what the path was with Garver there. But, you know, now that he's more of the catcher and I don't know what's going on with Garver off the top of my head. So I can't, I'm not going to speak on it. But ultimately, what I'm getting is Heim is going to play 457 at bats last year, 61 runs, 28 doubles. 18 bombs, 95 ribs, two stolen bases, batted 258. 258 is a career high for him. Do not get me wrong. I don't know how much of that is legitimate. But in the minors, he batted 310, 258, 260. And it's kind of all over the place, honestly. Uh, and that was with Oakland. Maybe he's just, you know, turned a new leaf, figured something out. And, you know, this is where it's at. I will tell you that. He had 40 walks to 96 strikeouts, which isn't atrocious, which could have inflated it. Maybe he's just developing a little bit more plate discipline and not being as, you know, you know, um, trigger happy. We'll see. But 
Haim, I think, is primed to have a really nice season. I think that, honestly, 20 to 25 home runs is definitely a possibility. The ribbies are legitimate, especially with that lineup. Young having a full season there. Um, the runs, depending on where he is in the lineup, I think can go up. And we'll see what we'll see what it brings. But I mean, he's going he's going pretty cheap as well. Again, another name I think is going to drop this year before he's you know elevated in in the, the draft minds. So I think Heim, this is going to be the last year we might get him so cheap. So we shall see with him. Again, he's a late 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 breakout kind of late age breakout at age twenty eight. But again, like it's a catcher, so it's a little bit different. It's harder to get playing time. To stay on the field as a catcher, you have to be a really good defensive player. And those are the things that kind of keep catchers off the off the field, essentially, if they can't rely on them game in and game out. So I feel like Haim has now proved himself, and that lineup is stellar. So I'm, I'm thinking Haim's going to have a good season. But let's move on. Let's talk about Riley Green. Riley Green, pick 171, outfielder for the uh, Tigers. Big boy. Big boy. And I, I'm a fan of Riley Green. He did his thing last year. Six with three, 200 pounds. You know, if my guy didn't get hurt last year, I think we would have saw something real special. 378 at-bats last year, 51 runs, 19 doubles, four triples, 11 bombs, 37 ribs, seven stolen bases. <laughs> Struck out like an animal. 114 strikeouts, 35 walks. But batted 288 and had an OPS of 796. You know, he's a new age batting average guy. You know what? It is what it is. I'm not going to knock it. So here's the thing. If you haven't heard about Riley Green, I'm going to tell you about Riley Green. Riley Green is a force. Riley Green can hit bombs for days. And I foresee him doing that. I think he's going to be a really, 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 really good hitter. Like, he's going to be fantastic. The power is there. He's tall enough to make that ball go yard in Detroit no matter what. The exit velocity is fantastic. Everything about him is fantastic. I am really excited to see. He even had a season in the minors where he had 16 stolen bases. He had seven last year at a half a season. So maybe maybe we see 15 stolen bases, which will also elevate him for me. I like Riley Green, Green a lot. I think that, you know what, him going this late is definitely worth the shot. I mean, your UT slash last outfielder, I'm good with it probably Leaning more towards UT, even first bench player versus last outfielder, unless you're in, in like a 14 man league with like four outfielders, then you know what? Riley Green is a steal. But, you know, I'm all about it right now. Riley Green is definitely on, on the list of guys I'm targeting this late in the draft, especially as we're going into the last couple rounds here. So, you know, all about it. Riley Green, how you doing? Now, you know, I got to talk about this guy, and I won't say his nickname that I like, and it's Vinny Pasquantino. We've talked about him a lot, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on him. All I'm saying is, here's the thing. I don't, you're no, at where he's being drafted right now, you're not going to have to pay or even leave the draft as him as your starting first baseman. Unless you've completely missed out and you're saying, this is going to be my starting first baseman and you load it up everywhere else. You got outfielders out the wazoo. You got a solid second baseman, first baseman, ex, I mean, the third, et cetera. So you got a nice rotation rolling. You're you're down around 15 right now. And you're like, okay, I got I I got I got Vinny Pasquantino up here, and I'm just gonna pick him up. Then hey, do it. I don't blame you. I got Vinny P as I think my seventh first uh, at a first base, my seventh first baseman, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see real quick. Eighth. Okay. Guys that are going higher than him are getting drafted much higher than him, and I have them lower. So Vinny P, I'm okay with that strategy. I'm okay with just waiting. Or even CES, the guy we talked about earlier that's even late going down a little earlier than him, but I just, hey, I'm all about it. I like CES better, obviously, because the team he's on, but hey, Vinny P can be stellar, and I think that without a doubt, you should be targeting him in this round. So I do have one last guy. I'm going to just name him. We will talk about him more as we get into draft season, so I don't need to spend a lot of time. I also don't think this pit, this draft price is real. Uh, Jackson Cheerio. I'm going to give a quick 30-second, and we're getting out of here. He is fantastic. He got paid a whole bunch of money. Big-time prospect. He's going to be great. I think we're going to start seeing him jump up to the 120, so I don't think that this is real. If it is anywhere around this pick, he's going to be a must-draft in every, every draft you're in. But with that being said, guys, we're going to get out of here, or by we, me, and if you can, check out 
Locked On's 24-7 streaming channel where you can get all your local experts and biggest stories, etc. Check it out there, 24-7 YouTube streaming channel. And we'll check you next time. It's just going to be Dom. So peace out, guys.